Hi, I'm Joe Carris from Match Fishing Magazine. You can join me today at the beautiful Alders Farm Fishery just outside Milton Keynes. And now today I'm going to do a bit of uh, pellet waggler fishing. Now it's, it's an absolute glorious June day, it's 20 plus degrees, the fish are everywhere on the top, which screams shallow fishing. Now I could go about it on the pole, but when you're having a nice day's pleasure fishing, it's nice to fish the pellet waggler, you know, you, it's really busy, you're in and out feeding and it's just nice to catch them on a rod and line. So I just want to go through like a few of the basics that you you know that will help you along with your pellet waggler fishing. Now the first up is the rod choice. Now this is a, a top of the range acolyte 11 foot cart waggler. It's you know it's a beautiful bit of kit, it's lovely and light but that's a bit irrelevant you know it's nice to use and everything but it's not necess not really necessary. The key thing is that it's 11 foot in length this means that you know when I'm because on the pellet waggler, you could cast up to five, six, seven hundred times in a session. You don't want to be fatigued, you know, a long rod can be a bit cumbersome. This nice short 11 foot design, there's loads of them on the market from 30 quid up to 300 quid, you know, whatever you want to spend. But the key is that length, that 11 foot, nice and user friendly, helps you react quickly to bites, you can cast really comfortably, so easy to use and they bend lovely, you know, they're just a joy to use. So. That's my piece of kit, the Acolyte Cart Waggle 11 foot, but like I said, any good 11 foot through action rod will do the job for you. The reel, this is as old as the hills this is, this is, must be 10 years old, it's my old old faithful Daiwa TDR, 2500 size, you know, it's a small reel by Pellet Waggler standards, a lot of people like a bigger reel to allow them to reel in faster, but you know, I'm not too fussed, it's only a short chuck today, and this nice little reel matches up lovely with this short rod. Importantly, it's a front drag model, which I think is important. You know, the, the drag's ever so smooth, and I play the fish off the drag rather than backwind. I just find the whole thing makes the whole process that much simpler, really. Now, that's loaded with three pound Maxima. Now, if I was on a bigger water, Gold Valley, Lyford Lakes, that kind of thing, you know, I'm fishing for bigger fish on venues like that, I'd use something like six pound Drennan Series 7 or seven pound, eight pound even. But here, you know, it's nice, it's short chuck, small floats, the fish are only three to four pound, three pound maxim is lovely, you know, it flies off the reel, keep, keeps you nice and in contact with the float, absolutely brilliant. On to the float itself. Now, these are brand new from Drennan, and they're the popular crystal pellet wagglers, they're called shorties. This is a four gram model, as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. It's, it's pre-weighted, so you don't, you know, it doesn't need any shot. It's got all the weight at the bottom like that. It's got a little disc to stop it diving. It's got a nice visible top with flights on it and it's crystal. You know, the jury's out whether the fish can see them. You know, people say they can, people say they can't. I'm not fussed, it's a nice float. You know, if you believe that the fish can't see them, then great, you know, if it, if it gives you that bit more confidence, then that's brilliant by me. Now, I like to use a, a nice, quite a heavy float if I can. The reason being, that, that's a four gram model, the reason being when you cast out you want a nice straight line to your float. This just prevents, you know, occasionally one will hook itself on the bite, you know, you'll get a, you'll chuck it in, it'll land, your rod will go round. But more important, if that isn't the case, you know, fish are getting wary nowadays, but a lot of the time, you know, you've got to actually strike at the bite. So if I use a heavier float, I can cast out, I can keep a nice tight line to it, and as soon as that float goes, I'm in contact with the fish. Really important that is. So that's it. And, you know, that's the, the, the hardware. Onto the actual rig that I'm using. Again, simplicity in itself. You just want something you can cast out hundreds of times and it'll never tangle. So all I've got is, I've got obviously my float, a snap swivel, just running on the line there. And all I've got it stopped in place with is two of the Guru super tight line stops. Now, these are the best ones I've used to be honest. I used to use other makes and I'd have to put two or three on there. But with these Guru ones, you just don't need to. They're so tight, they grip the line so well. You know, I can just have two on there. I've set the float probably 18 inches deep. The fish are actually shallower today. That You know, that you can see them in the top, cruising around in like the top six to eight inches of water. But if I was to fish that deep, it wouldn't be too good. I want the bait falling past the noses. So I fish 18 inches deep and that hook bait will just fall slowly past them. And then as soon as it reaches sort of this level, I'll reel it in and cast again. Like I say, the hook length, so I've got me just a loop to loop there. I've got a size 18 
Guru Pellet Waggle Hook with a hair rig and a bait band and an 8mm pellet on the hair. It really is that simple. <laughs> as far as bait for the pellet waggler is concerned, you know, funny enough, all I've got on my side tray, as you can see, is just a tub of 8mm pellets. There's fishery pellets, nice 8mm. That's all you need for this game. You know, you, you're fishing at probably 20 to 25 yards. You just want something that's got a bit of weight to it, like these 8mm. You know, you can fire them out accurately and not have a problem with wind. You know, if the wind gets up, I can still get them to the required distance. Crucially though, you need a bit of a specialised catapult for this. There's various ones on the market. Guru do an incredible pull, Drennan do the Revolution ones with a nice plastic thing. But the, my personal favourite at the moment is this Preston pellet pull. Now it's got a nice thick elastic, you know, that's hard wearing. You know, I'm not going to go through several catapults in the day, but crucially it's got this really clever little pouch. And it's a firm plastic pouch and it just fits like a few pellets in there nicely. But when I fire them out, the group it really tight, tight together. And I think that's important. You know, the more accurate you can be in any style of fishing, the more fish you're gonna catch. So I just think that that little pouch makes all the difference. You know, I'm only feeding two to four pellets all the time. You know, I'm feeding very regularly, like three or four times a minute, but I'm only feeding small amounts, two pellets, three pellets, that kind of thing. I'm just constantly ringing the dinner bell creating a load of competition in the swim and hopefully my waggler's going to land amongst them and going to get a few bites. Let's have a look, see if I can get some. Right, well there you go, it didn't take long to get one. You know, I must stress the importance of working hard with this method, you know, it's not for lazy anglers. It's not, here at Alders Farm, I'm catching a lot of fish, you know, there's a lot, lot in the venue. I'm always going to get a lot of bites. But on venues like Gold Valley, Larford, like I mentioned before, for a similar weight to what I'm going to catch today, you know, £100 plus, whereas I might need 50 carp here, I might only need 6 to 8 at venues such as that. But the work rate's got to be the same, you know, I've got to keep casting, keep feeding, and I might only get a handful of bites, but you've just got to keep it going, keep that bait going in, and have your little windows. There you go. Nice little mirror. Nice and landed. I just want to talk you through the routine that you must get in to, to make the most of your pellet waggler session. You know, it's not it's not for lazy anglers. I've got to cast several hundred times a session to get the most out of it. So obviously I've got my baited hook with the eight mil pellet on. I've got my tub of pellets, my you know my catapult. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the float in the edge. I've got my catapult. I'm just going to ping. As you can see, that pouch keeps the pellets really nice and tight. Three pellets. Three pellets. I've got my float ready. I'm going to cast it right amongst them pellets, or just past, just like that. Feather the float in so it doesn't dive, and I'm waiting for a bite. Now, I'm already thinking, I need to put some more bait in. So I'm just going to fill the pouch up, two more pellets, twitch the float. Three more pellets, reel in. So as you can see, the whole process is like 30 seconds in length. You know, so, I'm again, my float's there. Two pellets. Cast. Right amongst the bait. Float's landed, I've feathered it in. I'm filling my pouch ready for feed again. I'm feeding. When pellets have landed, I'm gonna give it a twitch. Twitching the reel just brings the float a couple of foot. It raises that hook bait up again. You know, an eight mil pellet sinks quite fast. So just twitching it gives you two bites of the cherry because most of the bites will come as soon as the float hits the water. So I'm back in, I'm going to feed again, two pellets, cast amongst some pellets, there we go, we're back in, feed again, three pellets, missed the bite. Now what you'll find with pellet waggler fishing, you'll get windows of like catching really well. So 
you know, I might go 10 minutes without getting a bite, then all of a sudden you'll catch five fish as fast as you can get in. That's common, that is. All it is is there's groups of fish swimming around in these lakes and you're basically waiting for them to come and get enough there and enough confidence to get them feeding. Feeding, twitching, feeding again, and we've got one. So as you can see, you know, I worked really hard to catch that fish. I've made several casts, I've fed, you know, a dozen times or more in that little window. I felt like there was some fish there then, so I've cut the, cut the bait back, not fed quite as often. And the fish has been, you know, drawn in by the, the, the float landing on the surface. It's thought it's a pellet, and the only one there is my up bait and it just couldn't resist. We've got a nice calf. As you can see, there's no rush, you know, keep the rod nice and low. Got my drag set fairly loose. I'm just gonna take my time and get him in. That's all that matters. I feel like there's some fish out there at the minute, and I don't wanna feed again until I cast out again. Sometimes, if it was a harder venue or a bigger venue, you know, I'd want to be feeding whilst I've got this fish on. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But because I feel like there's some fish out there at the minute, I feel like I could probably cast in again as soon as I net this fish and get a quick bite. It's all about reading your swim. You know, I've spent five minutes or so building the swim up again. To, you know, to get some competition there. That competition is there at the minute. I could definitely go back in. I can see the fish out there. I could definitely go back in and probably catch another one pretty quickly. So there's no rush. Keep the rod nice and low. As soon as it, I can see the float, so the fish is close. Oh, it's a nice fish, nice common. You see that nice through action rod's doing all the work for me. Soft drag. Here she comes. Nice, nice fish that. Five pound or more. Lovely. I'm not going to attempt to pick him up. We don't need to see, see him. We don't want to cause him any damage. As you can see, nicely lip hooked. Five pound common there. I say, I feel like I can probably nip out and catch another quick fish. So I'm just going to put a fresh pellet on get back out there before feeding, just to see. Right, we're back in. There we go. It's a good idea to get into practice, casting your float. We spoke about that tight line. You just, just as the float's about to land, stop it with your finger on the spool and it'll just straighten everything out. There we go, we're gonna. Back in. There's loads of fish out there. There we go, I've got that one without feeding anything. So we've created that competition in the peg. It's taken four casts, you know, I haven't, it wasn't the first cast that I was hoping, but still, it's a, it's a, it's a cheap fish, let's say. You know, I've caught it without feeding anything. I will put some bait in this time. As you can see, that's an, a nice little skill to master. You know, it's not essential, but if you can learn to feed, whilst you're playing the fish, then it's not going to do any harm. So basically I trap the rod in between my legs, fish is going nowhere, feed some bait, pick up and carry on. Nice fish again. That's, that's the beauty of this pellet waggle, you know. There's loads of fish in this lake, like two pounds, but you know, you do often catch a, a nice stamp of fish on a waggler. You know, the, the fish that are hanging out in the middle of the lake, don't really want to be caught. Here he comes. Ooh. Nice comment. Again. Nice chunky fish that one. Again, I don't want to pick him up. And just run up him. Nice little fish. Get him back. Off to fight another day. Right, so we just had that other fish, which 
I've essentially mugged in. Now I feel like I need to get some bait back in the swim. So I'm just, just got to float there in the edge. I'm just gonna ping three or four times, just without casting in, just to settle the fish again. They're, they're there, you know, they're attacking the bait. Look, there's one swirl just there then. But we'll get back in. We might just catch one straight away if we do this. So I've got back in, just past the bait. Yes, straight away. So just rest in the swim. Only for a minute, you know, just give myself a minute just to top the peg back up, get some fish gathered again. And I've got myself another quick bite. It's all these little tricks that, you know, if you put together over the course of five hours in a match or in a pleasure session, you know, just make your, make your day that bit better. The fishing is absolutely brilliant. There's loads of fish in here to catch. The beauty of it is, you know, if you're not so sure on your pellet waggler technique, or you just need somewhere to come and learn the, learn the method, then come to a place like this, you know, lovely setting, but there's plenty of fish to catch, and that's what, you know, just help you get into the into the groove. You know, oh, that nice mirror. Lovely. Love a nice fish. Looks square in the top lip. Never going to come off. There he is. Look, nice fish. We'll slip him back. And get back out. Now, just before I cast and make my decision, you know, I might want to feed. I might not want to feed. I'm just going to, you know, have a little look. Just assess the situation. Doesn't look like the fish are there at the minute. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do that little feeding regime again so I'm just going to feed three times this time just three pellets three pellets again two pellets it looks like there's some fish there again so we'll get back in hopefully catch another one see if we can get, catch a quick one now yeah there we go that's a great idea to Learn to trap your rod as you've cast it and you want to feed. You could use a rod rest, you know, a nice rod rest, but I prefer to keep the rod, you know, in, in my hands at all times, really. So, oh, he's going for it. Look at that. Awesome. Um, so I prefer to trap the, I'll, I'll talk you through it next time, but I prefer to trap the rod between my legs and be able to feed, you know, that's it's a nice little skill to master that is. As you can see here, my reels had better days. But I've caught a lot of fish with this reel, it served me very well. The back wine's gone on it, the bait line's a bit bent, but I like it. Here we go, it's coming round. Another nice fish, through action rod. Oh, a nice little common. Let's it again. Another one for the pellet waggler. Lovely fish, that one. Belly mark on him. Nice mouth. Beautiful. Slip that hook out. Nice barber's hook, size 18. Lovely. Let's get him back. Right, one little tip I do want to give you is changing your hook bait regularly, you know. I, try, I change it after, certainly after every fish, but I see some anglers fish the pellet waggler, and because the pellet's staying on all the time, they can just keep casting, casting, casting. And I think it's really important to keep fresh bait. If you think about it logically, every single pellet you, you fire in is bone dry, you know, it's just hitting the water. So why have one on the hook that's wet and sinking differently? Keep changing them hook pellets, you know, it really is important that. So great tip and that it really surprised me how few people give that thought just because the pellet's staying on oh there we go so you've changed that pellet and got one straight away absolutely awesome wonderful fishing really enjoyable really busy you know casting a lot and feeding a lot nice short rod Small reel, balanced tackle, that's the key to it. 
nice balanced rod and reel setup. You know, the line, got 015 hook length, the 18 hook, three pound main line. Everything's just working perfectly. See the float, so it's well within netting range now. Pick up that net, slide him out. There he is, another Alders Farm Common in the net. Lovely little fish, look. Lovely, getting back. Right, I mentioned about learning, teaching yourself how to like hold the rod and feed, you know, without using a rod rest. So basically, the whole motion is trapping it like that, just between your knees. You know, my hands are free. The rod's out of the water. I can feed. I can do all manner of things without having to worry. So just like that, just between the knees, job done. Right, so I'm going to get that float back out and show you what I mean. So there we go. Out back and to feed. Rod between my legs. Fill the pouch, feed. Give it that little twitch, back between my knees. Feed again. Oh, missed it. But your hands are free to do all manner of things, so I'm just gonna check that pellet. As I said before, I don't wanna leave it on for too long. As Soon as it starts to look damp, I'll change it. Rod between the knees. Feed. Feed again. There's loads of fish here. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go, we've got one. Now what's interesting, a lot of the bites are coming once the float's been in a while, which is surprising. Normally it's all on the splash or on the twitch, but I've not had a single fish on the twitch today, which is surprising. But it just shows how every day can be different, you know. Cutting the feedback's working well today, whereas on other days, raining it in. Re you know, it's, a, it's a common phrase that, raining the pellets in. But there is days when that's necessary, you know, feeding loads and loads of eight mils. Today just, just doesn't seem to be a need. I think because, probably because I'm sat here, you know, on my own. I've got the cap a bit of a captive audience situation, really. There we go, we're not pushing him. Another nice fish. You can see how big weights are done quickly on this method. You know, it's hectic fishing. See the float, so he's ready for the net nearly. Don't rush, keep the rod low until you really need to lift it up. Here he comes. Where is he? He's a tiny little fish. There he is. Another nice Alders Farm carp. Beautiful. Carp, beautiful. Lovely little common carp. Who wouldn't be happy catching one of them every chucking? Right, one last tip for you now. Like I mentioned before about just using eight mils on the hook, but on you know there's occasional venue or later in the session when the fish are a bit crafty, a bit tricky, we might just need something that'll give you that little edge. Now these of that little edge. The Sonia Bait semi buoyant bandums. Now, the flavour's salted nut crush, I'm, I couldn't care less about that. What I, what I do like is the nice pale colour, very, very similar to a pellet. Now, the great thing about these is, as the name suggests, they're semi buoyant. So, if I was to put one on the hook on its own, it'd actually float. But what I've done, I've pinched a tiny number 10 shot just above my bait band on the hair. And that's just enough to sink it. What it'll do, it'll flutter down through the water. It'll probably take 20 seconds to fall the full depth for that, that rig. And it'll just flutter. And what that can do is really catch the fish off guard. You know, it gives them a little bit longer to inspect it. They might snap at it as it's fluttering through the water. But it can be really good for better fish, you know, real big lumps late in the day. Great little tip that. Now let's see if I can catch one more on this to end the session nicely. Right, so here we go. I'm just going to try and catch one more fish. I've got my salted nut crush, semi-buoyant bandam on. Let's see if we can catch one on this. Let's 
get it back out there. Back in. I don't want to keep banging on about this, but you know you've got to keep the feed going in. Keep it regular. Keep it, you know, keep it nice. And you, I won't cast as frequently when I, I'm trying this. It'll, I, I try it every now and again, but just sticking that slow sinking hook bait on. See now, it's probably it's probably sunk. So let's cast again. I'm going to feed, feed again, and let's cast. There we go. Fishing definitely got harder now. But just, just trying that little semi buoyant bandon trick just got me another one last fish to end on. Always work, but it is a nice, nice one to have in your armory. At the end of the day, it's still all you've got is your tub of bandums and your pot of eight mils. That's all you need for a lovely day's pellet waggler fishing, which I've had today. Only fish for probably two hours, maybe three hours at the most. Probably thirty carp. Fantastic fishing, anyone's. Oh, it's a nice big mirror. One of the wise ones who thought he was too crafty. Now we outwitted him with that semi buoyant bandum trick. And there he is. Beautiful little fish. Let's get him back. I hope you enjoyed that, you know, there's, there's a few nice uh, pointers there to help you get more out of your pellet waggler session. It's a simple method, you know, keep that work rate high, use reliable tackle, the right floats, the right reel, the right rods. Keep your bait choice simple and get out there and enjoy it, you know, it really is a fantastic method and now the sun's out, there's no better time to try it.